I'm so glad to see all of you here. This looks like a great, diverse group, and I'm sure you're going to get a lot out of the uh, presentations this morning. Thank you, Interim Dean Director. And uh, without any more delay, I would like to call up. I believe, Janice, you will be going first. I would like to call up our star for the day, um, Dr. Janice Uchida, and she will be followed by uh, Ms. Mr. Ray Ochida. Thank you. Okay, I'm Janice Uchida, and I work in the Department of Plant and Environmental Protection Science. It is PEPS, and uh, <clears throat> we're in the Tropical Plant Pathology Program. Plant pathology and entomology merge to form this um, Plant Environmental Science Protection Department. We're in the College of Tropical Agriculture, Human Resources, and one of our missions is to educate the people in the tropical world. So as long as we can fund it, we are more than happy to come and help educate other people. Take down my email. Any of you want to contact me, just use that. Uh, my husband, Raymond Uchida, is there. He is a salt chemist and agronomist. So he will say a few words after I do about what other possibilities uh, might exist for what is wrong with the breadfruit. He has two big jobs. Um, he's the director of the Agriculture Diagnostic Service Center at CTAR, okay? And they receive samples from all the farmers, big and small, also homeowners, yeah? For people who wanna know what's in their soil and what do they have to add to get the crop to grow better? Yeah, so they also conduct plant tissue analysis. They can take the plant and see what's missing, what nutrient is missing, so that you know they all help to uh, increase the growth of the plant. Uh, he has people that identify insects and also does disease analysis. Um, they also analyze feed crops, <coughs> hi, and they determine the protein and oil content. They also, uh, um, assay for herbicides. Sometimes people suspect there's some toxic killers in their environment, so they can assay for herbicides, which are weed killers, and they can also analyze for toxin, like anthrax, drugs, and other unknowns. Um, he's also the county director for the island of Oahu, and so um, there are several islands in our state, but 80% of the population lives on Oahu. So it's not the biggest island, but it's the most heavily populated. There are eight uh, research and extension services um, in Honolulu. Honolulu is the city and county of Oahu. So a lot of people haven't heard of Oahu, but it just refers to the same island. So it includes the Waimanalo Research Station, Poa Moho Research Station, um, the Magoons Educational Center, which is next to UH, and in the country, Pro City Urban Garden Center, which has become um, very popular. These are the islands. Um, so this is the island of Oahu. Like I said, not the biggest, but most of the people live um, on Oahu. It is where Waikiki is, and also the uh, UH main campus. Okay. Um, the, the work I'm going to present was largely done by my student, uh, Takena Redfern, and she came from Kiribati. She earned her master's degree with me. She worked on breadfruit diseases that were very severe in Hawaii at that time. Um, she wasn't the most brilliant student, but she had a very good heart. and. Um, Many of the students in our department and in her program really loved her. She was hardworking, spent many hours studying the diseases of breadfruit. Um, <clears throat> this was a challenge because disease occurred on other islands and she needed to coordinate the shipment of the diseased plants <coughs> and do the assay as quickly as possible. A lot of the samples came from Maui at uh, Kahuna Gardens. There's a very long single lane road from here to Kahului. And the drive, it takes more than one hour and it's very winding, long road. 
And then when they get it to the airport, um, it has to be flown to Oahu, and we're located in this area. Um, and this map also shows that there are two other um, gardens with breadfruit on Kauai and two more on um, the big island. So this is a healthy tree. Um, breadfruit is Artocarpus attilus, major food crop for some of the Pacific Islands. In Hawaii, it is used locally. None of it is exported because we don't have a big industry. And because there's no big industry, so most of the breadfruit there are many cultivars that are grown in Hawaii. They are the smooth skin type. There are numerous cultivars, but most of them, people don't know what they have. Many people have one or two trees on their property, but they don't know which one it is. <clears throat> now with the participation of National Breadfruit Institute and other universities, more cultivar recognition um, is possible. So this is a typical diseased fruit. These lesions are usually circular. Um, it's brown rot, and the surface is covered with a white material. These are spores of the fungus. To determine what caused this, what caused this disease, we take a knife and we cut off all the surface because on the surface there are many things that are not the pathogen. They're just there because the tissue is dead, so they live on the dead tissue. And so we want to get rid of that, make our job easier, and uh, slice off the surface. You can see this infected area. So. The best place to find a pathogen is right next to the healthy tissue. So we take a piece of the disease and healthy tissue, we cut that out, and that's what we're going to use to assay. You can cut the fruit in half, and you can see how deep the lesion has gone, and you can make more isolations um, from this area, you know, as well as this area. Here's a fruit that came from the field. So in this case, you know, she cut it open and she took many samples. At this time, we didn't know what was the cause. So she took from here different samples from one fruit. And we take each section, put it on a clean paper towel, get a razor blade, and then cut it into small sections, and prepare 10% chlorine bleach, add a drop or two, or the R is missing, or two of detergent. Um, place the pieces into the bleach to surface sterilize the outside of the piece. Then put on a, touch a clean paper towel, drain off the excess bleach. Put it on water auger, leave it at room temperature and the fungus will come out. If you can put it in the light, that would be good because some fungi do not produce spores. Um, in darkness. And mm. after two to five days, check the plates, um, trim out the hyphae that's emerging from the tissue, and try to get a single hypho tip. So what you do, you take the disease section, half is healthy, half is disease, and you cut it up into smaller pieces. You take the small pieces and you make this 10% bleach, which is um, 10 ml of bleach and 90 ml of water and then one to two drops of um, detergent yeah so that it's you know breaks the surface tension and then the pieces will be exposed to the bleach otherwise they are on a piece um, microscopic bubbles and things can hide under the bubbles. So put in that little bit of um, soap and then put the things, the, in, mix it up just a few seconds and then take it out. And then we put it onto a water auger plate in a pitcher plate. And then after a few days, the high feed will come out and then try to cut out a single one. If you cannot cut out a single one, that's okay. Cut out two or three. Um, <clears throat> Put it into a nutrient plate, let the fungus grow. It will make spores and you can identify um, the fungus. Okay, so this is Phytophthora. It's very aggressive pathogen. It grows very fast. And you can see that if you had this on the plate, you can get a, 
a sharp scalpel. Girls are better at this than guys, I'm sorry. But <laughs> you can cut out this piece and have a pure culture. Okay, so the major fungi that we collected from Maui and Kauai was Phytophthora, Geochecum, and Fusarium. Now you have to figure out, we got these three fungi, which one is the pathogen? Even if it looks like a Phytophthora rot, we have to go through the process, because sometimes the other person might have made a mistake or, you know, something like that. So to get the facts, we want to do the whole Koch's postulate. So first isolate it, then grow each of them in pure culture, um, place the pure culture on a healthy fruit, and reproduce the disease. Um, that disease should resemble what you collected from the field. And <clears throat> so pure cultures were grown, spores were gathered, the inoculum was adjusted to 10,000 spores per ml, and we either sprayed it onto the plant or took some um, paper discs and put it onto the fruit. So we put that inoculum here and then put it all in a plastic bag to maintain high humidity for 24 hours. Okay, and after that, we opened the bags and the fruits were kept in the lab. Plants were in the bag for 24 hours and then put back into the greenhouse. And we looked at them every day to check for symptom development. So this is lesions of Phytophthora uh, caused after four days. It's pretty fast that it gets in and causes a lesion. On small seedlings of breadfruit, we inoculated with Phytophthora. The seedlings were infected, so now we knew what does the leaf rot look like. And that was really important because the growers were so concerned that some kind of um, damage on their trees was caused by Phytophthora, and they're sending us hundreds of leaves. Um, none of it yields Phytophthora. But when we reproduce the lesion caused by Phytophthora, then we could say, okay, this is what you look for. This is Phytophthora. And we also found that the stem could be infected by the pathogen and was able to move from the infected leaves into the stem and then it could kill the plant. And so this was also going on in the field. So you had a large tree and it would get into the leaf or the fruit and then go into the stem and kill the stem and it caused a canker and work its way down and <clears throat> can kill sections of the tree. So for control, the first thing you must do is if you see any fruit with a um, Phytophthora lesion, you must gather it in a bucket or a bag and remove it from the field because you want to reduce the number of spores. Yeah, more spores, more new infection. So sanitation is really important. So it's simple but hard to do. Need a lot of labor. And then if you see dying branches, cut it off. If the tree looks half dead, cut the tree off. Sacrifice the tree to keep the rest of the field um, healthier. So this is a Phytophthora sporangia. When it's put into water, it divides up into smaller spores and each of them will squeeze out and swim away. And because they can make this zoospores which swim, um, they look like this and it has one short and one long tail. They can swim to different sites, so, and they can be in the ditch water, on the bench, in streams. Mm -hmm. And so this really increases um, their potential for spread. I'm trying to see that by the top front. You're saying, is that part of the branches, or is that part of the leaf that if it falls uh -huh. on the river or water, it will uh -huh. spread diseases? Okay, see this? The white stuff is all spores. Yeah, so all the white stuff is spores. That's why when you find infected fruit, you have to gather it and throw it away. Not in the end of the row. <laughs> Out of the field, okay? Out of the field. It's important to know how to spread so we can yeah. avoid uh, right. spreading it out easily. Does it also spread by air, by wind? Or Not so spores? much. Is it spores or? Spores. So it's all just mainly by water? Yeah, or splashing. Yeah. And that's the fruit 
the leaf, the leaf is also infected by the yes. toxin. Yes, yes, mm -hmm. and the stem. So the best way to control it is to just cut off the plant. Cut off, and cut off the infected it. part. You can't burn it, but you gotta make sure it's dry. Uh, yeah. Yeah, uh -huh. it won't burn. <laughs> 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 okay, your brief uh, observation here in Saipan is that. I haven't seen it. So this fungus produces these chlamydospores, and the chlamydospores are round, and they have really thick walls, and they can survive in the soil for more than a year. So this is why it's bad for the fruits to fall to the ground, because in the fruit there's a lot of chlamydospores, and the disease will survive um, in the ground. This is another species we found. We found a lot of Phytophthora palmivora. Phytophthora palmivora in Hawaii attacks papaya, also attacks cacao and many other things. Uh, this is Phytophthora tropicalis. Um, it's different because it has a narrow base. It has a really long pedicel, almost looks like a tail, but it's just a stem you know, of the spore. This is what we isolated from different um, varieties. These we know the varieties because they came from the breadfruit collection and um, the grower knew what they were, sent the name. So we got many phytophthoras from many different uh, varieties and also geotrichum and fusarium. Uh, that, yes. This particular uh -huh. Is it specific to breadfruit or does it attack other Others. like papaya? Yes. I've seen papaya, the whole yes. skin is White. very soft, oh. especially now during the rainy season, uh -huh. and it's very soft fat. Yeah, if you see a rot on a papaya and it's covered with a white growth, yeah, yeah. it's the same thing. So what do you do with those? What do you, what do, you do to, to act to prevent that from getting the diseases? Uh, it, you have to bring that diseased organism to your property. So don't bring anything that looks diseased. If it is, send it out with the garbage. Don't, don't put it in compost because the spores will survive very well in the compost. Yeah. Yeah. And a single isolate of Phytophthora tropicalis was obtained from the USDA Tropical Fruit Collection in Hilo. After five days, the fruit that was inoculated had the same kind of symptoms. Internally, it is firm and white. The controls were completely clean. Dr. Yes. Uh, <clears throat> if you see that symptoms there on the fruit, is it still safe to boil and feed for your livestock, like for example? I don't know. Um, nobody has done that kind of study, but in general, I wouldn't feed infected fruits to the livestock because I don't know what might happen to them. If you cook it really, really well, it will be killed. Hmm. But what I don't know is some fungus make some <clears throat> toxin and that are not broken down by heat. Yeah, so that's why it's, if you have plenty, don't feed. But if you don't have enough food for the animal, maybe you have to just cut off the bad part. So we also tested Fusarium geotrichum and did not cause disease. However, geotrichum is really commonly isolated. Um, when the breadfruit has a geotrichum, when you carry it, your finger will go into the fruit. It is so soft and mushy, and you can take it and put it on a slide, you can see the fungal mycelium um, inside the tissue. So um, what we have to do now is look at which cultivar did the geotrichum come from and test the same cultivar. Wow. So you're telling me, because that's the best part I like. I like it when it's ripe in and soft and you get that back to your peel, uh -huh. that's the skin, <laughs> and get the inside and I like that part. You're telling me that. Is that what we call geotrichum? Geotrichum. Is that mm -hmm. edible or edible? Because I, I, I eat them. Does it taste good? Yes. Must be okay. <laughs> and I'm still alive. Yes, that's right. And healthy. <laughs> 
these fruit rats were associated with Phytophthora geotrichum and Fusarium. Only Phytophthora was shown to be a severe pathogen. <clears throat> there are numerous other fungi, such as Lazio diplodia. They used to call it Botcher diplodia. Now they changed their name to Lazio diplodia. It was isolated from leaves. And we still have to test those. Okay, so these are other images that I got from the internet. Um, this is a breadfruit tree. It has a canker over here. It's just a dark colored area. If you cut into it, you can see that the, uh, the tree is infected. Typical Phytophthora rot. It's round, it's <coughs> circular, and it's got the white growth, which is the spores. It's really bad, yeah? If you touch it, it'll be on your hands. The breadfruit gets hard, right? It huh? gets hard. The breadfruit gets hard. Oh. Infected area. Oh, yeah, yeah, it's yeah. firm. Yeah. <clears throat> and this is really f going already. I don't think much to be eaten here. Uh, this is a common problem. It's a soft scale. I haven't seen this here. We saw mealybugs on some of the fruits but I didn't see soft scale. This ugly looking thing is a hard shell scale. So underneath is a scale. It feeds on the leaf. So the other side of the leaf will have some spots. Is that I a leaf? Yes, oh, wow. but I haven't seen this here. So yeah. those are actually, because it looks like, yeah, I hate to say it, but it looks like my dog sticks. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they don't move. Yeah, they don't move. <laughs> there's a there's a larva farm, and once it's settled down and stuck on, that's it. Doesn't move. It doesn't move. How did it get there? There's a larva farm. It moves. Yeah. I think it looked more like some kind of mite caterpillar, yeah. And then finally settles down and says, okay, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to pick this spot. And then it starts feeding and makes a shell and doesn't move. Yeah. But makes more eggs. These spots actually look um, orange or yellow, and these are the ones. Um, and some people think it's rust, but actually it's an algae. The algae? Yeah. Before it spreads, do you wipe them off just so that you don't spread the diseases? It's not serious. I think algae, you can practically ignore it. Ignore it? Yeah. It's a many, many host. If you have a guava nearby, it'll go to guava. Yeah, mm -hmm. It'll go to palm, it'll go to mango. But it's not a serious thing. But this probably is. And I don't know if this is correct. Um, it was reported to be called by the Felnius, but I don't know if that's what Felnius looks like. Yeah, that's our big problem. Yeah, uh, on, but uh, usually you see a bigger mushroom-like thing, right? Yeah. We, this thing attacks, includes toxins, attacks also uh, cacerina, trees, uh, uh -huh. fruit. Right, right. And, uh, yeah. Uh, what is it? Uh, uh, Plain trees. Tree. Basically. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But the symptom doesn't look right to me. Yeah, you don't yeah. see that white stuff? Though. Yeah, yeah. Uh -huh. A group of scientists were here about three months ago and uh -huh. they were doing this something from Japan. Oh. Yeah. Usually it's uh, light brown, dark brown, or black. Uh -huh. Yeah. I don't see any white. White, white yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh -huh. So I don't know, but that's why I say reported. <laughs> okay. So, thank you. <laughs>